the round table on Wednesday where we discussed some parts of it already. This is now a presentation about the different uh, stuff we do uh, to test new profits automatically. Um, during the, uh, we'll talk in the second half, I will now present uh, what automated tests we are using. Um, so uh, I will just start with. Uh, so why should we use automated testing? Uh, automated testing it is fast, gives you a, a short turnaround uh, to, to inform you if you introduce the bug or not. Uh, best would be already before you push, but even after you push, uh, it, it's quite quick. The Tinderbox will uh, report, it to you, report it to you in normally less than an hour. Uh, and <coughs> you know this cycle, okay, uh, we don't write tests because we don't have time. We need to fix bugs, and, and that's because you don't write tests originally. If, if you add a test for each fixed bug, it won't appear again, and over time, the number of uh, bugs that, that will be introduced decreases. So you just need to break this cycle once, and, and, and suddenly um, you have time to add your tests um, because you have less bugs. So, how do we actually help uh, developers write tests in the office at the moment? So, we have a quite good testing framework already. It's built around CPP unit. Um, it, it works on all platforms, so it works on Mac, uh, Linux and Windows. Um, the, the shared test code is in UNOTEST and TEST. Uh, you have already tried a few uh, tools is there that help you um, to set up LibreOffice for a test, HTML and XML helpers, uh, XPath alerts, they are quite new, uh, Miklos introduced them, so you can um, assert on an exported document uh, that something is there or has some special value. Uh, you can validate exported files, that's quite new as well, so <coughs> at least in Kite we already use that. Every file that is exported in our tests will be validated with, uh, with a validator and we find uh, therefore uh, validation errors already in the tests on the Tinder boxes. Um, and there are existing frameworks for, for writing tests in Calc, Impress and Writer at least. I think Base has some, uh, some existing code that's in a quite rough shape. Um, what else? Math does not have many tests yet. Um, there are also some, some uh, <coughs> real unit tests in other modules, but it's more difficult to test them and you need to read more code because well, there are not that many tests yet. So, the different types of tests that we have right now, um, the, the <coughs> most complex one is actually UKIP, UWriter and UIMPRESS. They link statically against the core libraries for, for these modules and therefore provide access to, to the private symbols. So you can really use the, more or less everything in CAI, everything in Writer if you uh, write a test there. Uh, but what's not possible is to import files uh, because you run in a, in a dependency problem with uh, loading the filter library. They are quite fast because <coughs> they, they have not access to everything, like, like the, the import. But, of course, it's quite hard to, to implement something there because you, you need to know all the details of, of the uh, library. Um, so, it, it's most of the time used for, for testing something special or, or a dynamic change that you, you can't assert in a after import or something like that. So, our import and export tests, they have grown quite a lot, uh, mostly thanks to Miklos and the writer guys who more or less add a test for each fix, import and export bug. Um, so, the, we, they are more or less separated. Um, we have the import uh, tests where we import a document 
and then make an assert or most, uh, most likely through, through some you know statements uh, and assert that uh, a, a condition is true. The, the export tests, uh, we have two different types. Um, export a file, import it again, and then similar to the import case, assert on the content. Or what's uh, quite new is uh, Miklos' uh, concept to, to assert uh, on, on the exported file to XPAR uh, that we have written the correct value into the file. They are slow because we, we have to load a document and over time, if you add many uh, test cases, you have the, the load time of like, I think, uh, 15, 20 or 30 documents and as you know, uh, loading a document is quite slow. If you need to export them, it's even slower. It, it loads our repository, so if you add such a uh, test case, make sure that your uh, document that you use for the import is, is small. We had some cases where people added um, documents that had one megabyte or something like that, which yeah does not scale. They, they are quite easy to write. You just need to, to create a document that contains what you, uh, what you want to test or what you fixed, and, and then find a way, most, mostly through UNO, you know, to assert that <coughs> what you fixed is, is correct. You, you don't need to know that much about the, the internals of, for example, Writer or Kite, because you can just use the UNO you know, API. Then we have API tests, uh, two types. The old Java tests, um, they are slow. Um, they are run in the subsequent check target. Uh, they are a bit unreliable, uh, so Stefan fixed some parts of it, but they fail uh, from time to time for uh, no apparent reason. They internally use some sleeps to, uh, to, to get everything right, and uh, the, the assumption is that if you sleep for a second, um, you can call the, the, the next stuff, but that does not work all the time. So then you get a test failure, and uh, if you run it the next time, it works. Uh, they are quite hard to debug, so um, you have some fun setting breakpoints in the Java code and, and hoping that it works, or, or setting a, a breakpoint in the C++ code. Um, but, but it's still the only way to test huge part of our UNO you know, API because well, writing new test code for that will, will take years. But for, for dual code, we have our C++ based tests. They are more reliable, they are in process compared to the out of process Java tests. And it, it, it's a lot easier to debug them. It's similar to the other tests, we, we have direct support in the build system. Um, and you get your GDB session, put your breakpoint there, and it will for sure stop there. And it, it's easy. Um, you should use the C++ way for new tests, or if your Java test reliably fails, it's most of the time easier to port it to C++ and debug it there and fix then your issue. There's also an easy hack to, to at least uh, rewrite the disabled Java tests in C++, which would help us uh, to enable again more, more API tests. We also have some external testing, automated mostly, so uh, I think the most famous example at the moment is the crash testing, which runs on 55,000 uh, documents imports them, exports them to, to a few formats, I think at the moment we export about 150,000 documents uh, and thus uh, checks if we crash during import, during export and then validates the ODF and OXML files that are generated and publish the results on, on the URL and also mails the developer mailing list uh, with, uh, with the number of files that crash um, yeah, fixing there is appreciated. We still have, I think, uh, a few 10,000 validation errors. Um, we, we have, built for the last one, um, suddenly 100 more import crashes and a few hundred more export crashes. So th there's some room to, to fix some new stuff. 
We have Modstrap, it's manual testing, but yeah, uh, it should be done for the parts that can't be automatically tested at the moment. Like all our UI code is not testable. Um, and if you have a, a test case or a, a bug that they have no idea how to test it, and after talking to us or to someone else, you decide it does not make sense to write an automated test, it would be good to add a modstrap test so that at least it's tested through the manual test runs uh, before release. So, and then my question is, um, if you have more ideas what we can add, what we should add, and just talk to me, I'm always open to new ideas. Um, yeah, I I'm happy to add new testing ideas if they improve the project. Do we want to make questions and answers maybe to this one right now? Yeah, yeah. We, we can do that. So, any questions to, to that part of the talk? What's holding us back from doing UI testing? Um, the, the UI testing is very fragile. So, um, if you change the dialog, if you change the layout, there's no good um, library support. So, so, testing libraries that support UI testing. Um, one idea is to go through, through the um, LibreOffice dispatch me uh, mechanism. Uh, I think the Apache guys are doing something in this direction, but in Java. And I want to avoid Java as a testing de dependency. And it, it just requires quite some work to, to explore what's possible. Um, another idea was the accessibility API. But that one is slow, is, is also not, not the best, is broken in, in quite a few uh, modules. So for example, the Kite one needs some love. Um, yeah. It's, it's quite on here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then what we do in Java is we, every single user interface element has an identifier. And then we actually we get the, the UI toolkit to we, we so instead of saying press the button at 100 by 100 pixels, we say press the button with the ID like this. Yeah, but, but, but it starts already. How do you open the dialog? How, how do, you, do you get to the dialog and so stuff? So getting through the menu to the dialog, you rename the option, you move the option, and suddenly it's not possible anymore. So, so that's where, where you need to find a way to make it reliable, because unreliable tests don't help. People just ignore the results or disable them. So, so you need to find a way that, that's really reliable, that's low maintenance for developers. And yeah, I, I haven't found a good solution yet. But apparently Michael has. <laughs> so uh, I have this question like Ninja Monkeys thing that it's like friendly to new robots. And of course you can semantically say that or something like that. But what is Can we have fuzzing in your uh, import and export crash tester just to, just to make it 
Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. If, if, if you give me more power, uh, I'm happy to advance it. <laughs> so, so it's running already for four and a half days. It's uh, ex uh, exposing kernel bugs. So we already found an, a, a GCC LD bug and, and a kernel bug with that. <laughs> and yeah, at the moment, it, it's not uh, possible to add more. But if if you add more hardware, sure. So on, on the more hardware account, uh, I saw this wonderful presentation by the infrastructure guys who, and, and I still have the, the idea that we should just make the LibreOffice homepage and say, be right back building for, for a week and uh, then we'll have enough power for everything that we want to do with testing. But I don't know if, if uh, our users would appreciate that too much, so um, yeah. So, So I want to. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I want to talk a bit about uh, uh, the new Tinder boxing stuff that I did, um, and the reason for that is that all the testing that we do, and all, well, Tinder boxing is also testing. It's testing the most basic, basic thing that something is building, and we have one web page for all of this, which has uh, like the 23 different platforms and types of builders that we have. But um, in an ideal world, we would have all these results and all the stuff that, that uh, um, Marcus showed ideally accessible in one place so that you can see what is breaking. There's, for example, actually, you could maybe do that with the current Tinderbox page in a way that you would have like the crash test reporting red if you have more crashes than the last run or something like that, but it's not really ideal for that. So um, let me uh, just quickly go through what uh, TV3 does. It does um, uh, just building like a Tinderbox, building the newest thing like you, uh, like you know. Um, although building can also mean just running a test or a crash test or whatever. So the actual implementation, what you test, is, is abstract. And if something breaks, it can actually go back in time and um, um, bisect uh, the, the first commit that, that broke something. And it can do that on multiple repositories. And that means you can do that, for example, um, on the source code with real builds and uh, stuff that you do in the build. But you can also do that for example, on a bisect repository and just have uh, a set of documents and see when was the first crash, uh, when was um, the first time that a document started to crash. And puts this in some web page like this where you see, okay, this was the last good commit. And then the next time I built it, uh, it started, it, it looked bad. And uh, so it went back and tried to find the first uh, commit that actually broke something, and we can also see there's uh, not known yet, uh, not yet known, which means that there are new commits on this branch, um, adding new stuff. So I had this this stuff uh, roughly ready, just working on that uh, a bit at the side, and uh, we never really deployed that because it was not really easy to deploy. So what I did now is put the whole thing in uh, Docker salt um, so that you have Docker containers that do this stuff. And this, this means that all the stuff is auto-configured um, and makes it easy to set this stuff up and have a re reproducible environment. So you can use that, for example, as a simple Tinderbox just running on your local machine, but you can also have like Tinderbox, multiple Tinderboxes running on different hardware doing the same test, for example. And have some of them in some cloudy thing and other things actually in physical hardware. And the main point is, you also heard this one before, um, that with Docker you can actually have reproducible um, environment for the tests that you're doing. For example, you can have uh, um, whatever, or baseline, for example, in an image, and then you can actually test on your local machine 
uh, still while this is breaking on the baseline and not on, on your machine. So let's look into how this stuff looks up. It's actually quite simple if you look at the, in the project layout. I'm going <coughs> to upload that later this week. Um, it's just this salt master that um, distributes the configuration to all the machines. It's view, uh, it's uh, the image of, um, of the minion, which is um, a Docker image that takes the configuration from the salt master, a make file that creates all these images, and then um, some salt configuration and an example script which is like the perfect script for every developer because that one always says this, this build and this was fine and there was no problem with it. So if you set that up locally, for example, you just say make SSH key, which generates a key pair for you to log in and configure um, the salt master. You never do that manually, but it, it allows you to remote control that from the make file. And if you then take, type make, uh, it creates all these images, how, however many you want to have, and uh, configures them and uh, sets them up, installs all the software on them and stuff like that. And that takes five minutes, and after that you have the, uh, the whole thing set up locally. And if you try to make start all, all the containers start up and uh, work with each other. There's, there are more commands, but I'll not go into that right now. Um, and then you have essentially a Tinder box that, if you have no new commits, that looks if it's broken. If, if it's broken, goes back in time and does by bisecting. So you can uh, simply by bisect with a good UI, or you can use it as a Tinder box that actually runs against something that is a moving target and is changing. And to show you uh, how the actual Tinder box script, the stuff that, that does the test, whatever you're testing, if you're testing a build, if you're testing a crash test, or whatever, is this is essentially the whole thing that you need uh, in the Tinder box script. This is the example um, that never fails. But the first thing it does is it uh, tries to see which commit it should build. This is the first request. So that's one URL, and then it says, okay, I'm, I'm going to start building this, and in the end it says, okay, I, I'm finished, and this is my result. And as you can see here, the result here is always good, so it never fails. So, um, yeah, actually setting up a tinderbox that runs against this is uh, quite easy, and you, you don't have to take care of all the uh, testing infrastructure and working results and stuff because that is all in the other, other things. But you just have to add a test, and whatever you want to test, you can test with these three uh, URL requests. OK, so that's uh, my part of the talk. If you want to know more about that, there's the URL at the beginning on the, on the first slide. And uh, my other talk also had quite a bit on, on TV3 and how the details work. Any questions? <coughs> 